Okay, we have here a pretty tricky looking integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity, e to the ax minus e to the bx over x e to the ax plus one, e to the bx plus one dx. And we have the condition on it that we want a and b to be greater than zero. Now for this one, my first thought on it was, you know, almost if you just cover this part up right here, it's the Frulani integral. And it's making me think that if we do it out, we can use a lot of the same techniques which is usually gonna be Feynman's trick where we're gonna to wanna to parameterize. We already have it parameterized, but we're gonna to wanna to treat one of these as a parameter, either A or B. I think it'll work fine either way, but I'm just gonna choose A. So we'll consider B a fixed constant and we'll turn A into our parameter. So how I wanna do it is we'll create a function over here. We'll call this thing F of A. And it's gonna just be, I'm just gonna copy it down because it's really all the same stuff we have right here. And now with our function, what I want to do is I'd like to differentiate with respect to A, except if I do it right now, it's going to be a mess, right? Because we've got, I mean, a lot of stuff's constants, but we've got two terms that we need to deal with, this thing and this thing as far as differentiating. So what I want to do first is let's break it up into two integrals. So how we can do it, we'll split it on the minus sign. So the first one is going to be just we'll have the e to the ax on it. And the second one's gonna be basically the same thing with the e to the bx in the numerator. And then what I wanna do here is get cancellation, but we don't quite have it. So what we'll do is we'll force it to happen. If I just add in a one right here, then this is gonna cancel with this. We don't wanna change it, so we do a minus one. But instead of putting it here, I can put it over here. So together, really with the minus sign, one minus one, we just added zero. So we didn't change anything. But then what that's going to allow is then I can cancel over here as well. So in both cases, we just have a one in the numerator. This is going to be our F of A value. And now that it's kind of cleaned up, I can differentiate it easier. So what I want to do is we want to differentiate this with respect to A, but I want to do it as a partial inside the integral. Keep in mind, this first one now is a constant. So this first integral, we don't even worry, because with respect, there's no, because there's no A in it now. So if we differentiate a constant with respect to A, this first piece is just a zero. And so for the second integral, we'll differentiate inside the integral as a partial with respect to A on this. So then we go ahead and differentiate. I got the minus sign out front. The one over X will be a constant with respect to A, so I can bring that in front and just focus on differentiating this. When you do this first, it's gonna be just power rule. You can think of this like, like u to the minus one. So doing that, we're gonna get u to the minus two or like one over this thing squared. So we're gonna get e a x plus one all squared. Then with chain rule, we're gonna get back, the plus one's gonna be zero. With chain rule, we get e a x. Chain rule again, derivative of a x with respect to a, it's just gonna be an x. So then we can cancel x with x right here but now we have a pretty easy integral. We can just do this with a u substitution. So how we wanna do it, let's set u equal to all this. So I'm gonna say, we'll say u is gonna be e a to the x plus one. And so take a derivative du is gonna be, that's gonna be a zero. We're gonna get e to the ax. We're back to differentiating by x now. So we're gonna have an a pop out dx. And one thing I forgot, when we take this derivative, we end up with a minus sign, right? Because we got the u minus one, you think of doing power rule, a minus sign pops out. So this becomes a plus. We'll go ahead and substitute. So first at our bounds, you plug in infinity here. This is still, our u value is still going to infinity. You plug in a zero, we get a one. e to the zero is one plus one, lower bound becomes two. Now for the du value, let me just clean it up to, so we can see what's happening. We almost have our du in the numerator. I just need this a value, so I can just create that, but I don't wanna change it, so I'll divide, or we'll multiply by one over a in front, so we're multiplying by one. So then now what happens, the whole numerator becomes just du. We have the constant out front, one over a, and then for all this stuff, this just becomes u squared. Go ahead and integrate this thing real quick. We get minus one over a u, just evaluated from two to infinity. When you plug in infinity, it's gonna be zero because we're in the denominator here. So we get zero minus times minus is plus, evaluate at two and we get just one over two a, and this is gonna be our f prime of a value. Okay, so let me just grab this value. I'll clean up the board and we'll continue from here. 
Okay, so now we have our f prime of a value, and I think it's a good time to maybe think about what we're doing a little bit. We want to go from this point, we want to get back to our f of a and find an expression where we can evaluate that because this is the same thing as this. So our, our goal is to find f of a. And so how we'll do it is we'll just integrate on both sides of this equation with respect to a. So what it's going to look like for our expression for now for f of a, it's going to be just the integral one half I can bring out front as a constant and we're just integrating one over a dA. Doing this one, we're going to get one half natural log absolute value, but remember we're greater than zero. So I'm just going to drop it and we'll have natural log of a plus C. And at this point, we just need to know what is this plus C. So we just needed a convenient point to evaluate this at. Just notice when a equals B, then what's going to happen is then the numerator becomes zero. So our f of b value, if we just plug that in, that's going to be zero. So you can probably see how it's going to work, but I can just plug in b here and we get half ln b plus c equals zero. So that means our c is minus half ln b. So putting this back together, if that's our constant, I can just plug this in minus one half ln b. But then what that allows me to do, I can factor out the one half and pull these together with log properties. So we end up with one half ln a over b. And we can bring that into the exponent. So for my final solution on it, we just get natural log square root a over b, and that's it. And like how I mentioned in the beginning, the similarity to the Frelani integral, the formula is really similar too, because with that, we have something like this. And I think there's another part we have, I can't remember the formula exactly, but it's something like this in front of the natural log. So, so, I don't know if, so I don't know if it's completely equivalent, but it's a very similar idea on this one. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.